Check one, check.
Stand with us this morning, if you will, page 281. We have heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. We'll sing first and last verses together this morning. Lift your voices and sing. Oh, we have heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Spread the tides all around. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Bear the news to every land. Find the sea. to church this morning. If you're glad to be here, would you say amen? amen? We've met to worship the Lord today and to trust that you've had a good week this week and a good day. Raise your hand if you're enjoying this fall season or fall weather. It's not fall. Someone reminded me we're still about two weeks away from fall actually getting here, but I'll take this a little bit uh, for the summer months. Uh, and I am excited about church this morning. It's so good to see you back today. And uh, you uh, remember some of our families were, I was telling my wife the other day, I thought, I said, I thought everybody went on vacation uh, in the summertime. And uh, half of our church is going on vacation now in the fall season. And that's fine. You pray for them as they're away. But I'm glad to see you this morning. And we're looking forward to a grand day to worship together. We want to go to the Lord in prayer to begin our service and ask God to bless uh, today in a very special way. I do want you to remember to please pray for uh, Miss Libby Lowe's uh, son. This is his name's Jason. And uh, he is at Baptist Hospital, from what I understand this morning. And uh, Miss Juanita gave me that word just a while ago. And so you pray for him not doing very well at all. And I know Miss Libby, uh, her and Wayne, of course, are mem- have been members of our church. They moved down to uh, South Carolina, and we miss them. We believe they'll come back one day. But you pray for her son there in the hospital this morning. Then also our children's ministry, it is packed. One of our junior classes is packed out over there, and that's exciting. I went over there, got word they were packed out, so I went over there to check on them, make sure they're doing well, and they are. And we're excited about the young people across the breezeway in the Sunday school building. You pray for our workers that God would use them to be a godly influence, uh, present the gospel appropriately to their age over there, uh, and then God would work in their hearts. And the whole the reason that we're here is for the Jesus Christ. Amen? is to, number one, if we're not saved, to trust Christ as our Savior. Number two, if we are saved, to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And I trust that your heart is here and you have that desire to worship the Lord. We also want to welcome those who are watching online this morning. Thank you so much for joining us. We have so many of our church still uh, not being able to be back with us. uh, And we welcome you today as well. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Ask God to bless. If you have a special prayer request or a need perhaps in your life, or perhaps you just want the Lord... Uh, to speak to your heart today. Would you raise your hand along with mine this morning? Because I do. I want the Lord to speak to my heart, have needs in my life. I just want to grow spiritually. Amen. I just want to meet with the Lord. I just want to feel refreshed and revived and helped today in my spiritual life. And let's go to the Lord in prayer. You pray together as a church family this morning. Heavenly Father, we love you and we're so grateful to be back in church tonight today. And thank you so much for our church family and their faithfulness to the house of God week after week after week. And uh, Father, we miss some of our folks are uh, traveling. We ask you to give them traveling mercies and safety and protection. And uh, Father, we ask also that you be with our, our church family who are not yet able to meet back with us, probably about 30% or so. And uh, Father, watching online this morning, and we ask that you would uh, give them a great day and encourage their hearts through the online ministry of this church. And Father, we also ask that you would uh, speak to our hearts today and hear, uh, use 
our youth workers in a great way. Father, as they minister, Father, the nursery workers and all the other folks in the other building, we ask that you'd use them and, and help them today. We ask that you protect us, Father, from the virus. We understand it's still going on, and we are trusting you for that. We ask that you are blessed today in a special, special way. Speak to my heart. Speak to our hearts. Challenge us. Convict us. Comfort us today. May the touch of God be upon the choir and the special music. May everything that's said and done bring honor and glory to your name. And we'll thank you for all that you do in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated. We have a couple announcements for you really quickly this morning. And we'll go over these and then we'll hear from our choir. We'll be receiving our offering today uh, as we normally have been through this pandemic at the end of the service here in our entrance. And so keep that in mind at the end of the service. Thank you for those who are continuing to give so faithfully during this time. God has richly blessed in a tremendous way, even through this season, and, uh, and I appreciate that very much. You can also give online to the Building Fund, the Milchian Fund, um, and the Youth Fund, any really uh, area that you would like to through online, and so keep that in mind if you will. And then if you're here for the very first time, we want to welcome you uh, here at our church. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, this is the greatest church in the world, and uh, and then uh, you'll find in your visitor packet, if you received one, a visitor card, also a pen provided in there. If you'll fill that out, please, and then put that in the offering plate at the end of service when you exit the building. We'd appreciate having a record of you being here with us today, and I trust the service will be a blessing to you. Then I want to encourage you to be back tonight at 6.30. I'm looking forward to uh, getting back in the Word of God. We're going through this series of the life of Moses, and uh, tonight we'll be talking about uh, Moses's hesitation. Have you ever been hesitant about doing something that you knew in your heart 100%? I'm not talking about doing a big, buying a house or something you're a little bit hesitant about doing. You know, someone wisely told me, you know, if you have any question about it, you need to wait on it. Amen? Uh, but, you know, I don't have any question about whether or not I, I, I want to be saved. Amen? There's no question if God said do it, if God told me to do it, then I know God doesn't make any mistakes. And if it's in his word, he's commanded me to do that as his child. And then we need to not be hesitant about doing what God wants us to do. We need to jump on board. Amen? And so uh, let's be faithful tonight. 6.30. Let's get an early choir practice. to be 6 o'clock. Keep that in mind. We're also voting on some cushion chairs tonight. Can I get an amen about that? So we hope that passes. And, uh, but uh, uh, we trust that it will. And uh, so keep all those things in mind tonight, if you will. All right? Then our midweek service this Tuesday at 7 o'clock. Now, uh, I'm telling you. Our midweek services, I'm, t- I'm looking around right now. We've had almost as good of a crowd as we are in here right now. Of course, our choir's up and all the, a lot of people over the other building, our young people and all that. Uh, but I'm telling you, their crowds have been tremendous. And the preaching has been out of this world. The singing has been phenomenal. And you don't want to miss the grand finale. Uh, raise your hand if you like the grand finale of the fireworks, all right? I'm going to miss those fireworks in Louisville now, but the truth of the matter is, you know, I could, I could bypass those fi- first 15 minutes of fireworks. I just want to get that grand finale. Now, I don't want to miss any. That may not be the best application for a revival because I had, d- didn't want to miss any of the revival. But I do want to say this. If you have not been here at all throughout Super September, I would encourage you to be here Tuesday, 7 o'clock. Raise your hand. If you've ever heard Chris Hazlett preach from Statesville, South Carolina, that's what I thought. Not Statesville, South Carolina, Statesville, North Carolina. And Brother Chris Hazlett is a pastor of a great church, a thriving, just, just church just like ours, old-fashioned church, but it's just thriving. They're in a, I think they're in a building project. They're in the same situation we are. They outgrew their auditorium, and now they're meeting in their gymnasium, and I think they're building and, and have plans to build, raising the funds right now to build. Maybe he'll say something about that. We'll see. But a great man of God in high demand all over America to preach, and he will keep your attention. Brother Chris Hazelup is a preacher, and he's probably in his 50s and a great man of God. Uh, and uh, you will enjoy, you will be blessed by the preaching of Brother Chris Hazlip. I believe God will use him in a powerful way. And then, raise your hand if you've ever heard the Daughters of Calvary from Mount Airy. They are a wonderful, wonderful group. And I'm glad that you're not raising your hands about these things because we want some fresh stuff coming in. Amen? And we want some fresh preachers people never heard. I am fresh singing. And I'm telling you, if you've enjoyed 
uh, the, the singing thus far this, this week, you will enjoy the Daughters of Calvary. These three ladies that do a phenomenal job, and God has got his hand upon them, and they're in high demand all over the country. We booked them so many months ago, and excited about them being with us as well. So keep all that in mind. I also have so many other things coming up uh, during this fall season, and we'll get those other upcoming events after the at the end of the service. So keep that in mind, if you will. All right, Brother Holly, uh, lead the choir today, and I know you will be blessed by the choir this morning. stand together if you will page 55 at the cross at the cross where I first saw the light first second and fourth verses together alas it did my Savior bleed and did my sovereign die would he that sacred head for such a
once in a while, I like to stop and read the words to a verse of a song. As we get so used to singing them, we forget about the words. But listen to the second verse. Was it for crimes that I have done? He groaned upon the tree. Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. Aren't you glad that Christ's love is unconditional? No matter where we've been, no matter what we've done, He loves us anyway. Sing with us now. Second verse together. Was it for crimes? Was it for crimes that I have done? He groaned upon the tree. Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled page 477 I hope it's built on nothing less than Jesus blood and righteousness the solid rock keep singing out this morning you sound good let's all sing together my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest friend but holy sung so good this morning. Lift up your voices, third and fourth verses together. Let's all sing. His oath, his covenant, his blood, support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. Shall come. 
this morning. Thank you so much for singing it out. I really appreciate that very, very much. Take your Bibles, please, if you will, to the book of Matthew. I just told Brother Holly a while ago, I said, Brother, it's very interesting that you picked out that song. So we're preaching on the wise man who built his, his, his house upon the rock and, uh, and how our hope is built on the rock, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I rejoice in that. I'm thankful for that. If your foundation is upon any other uh, situ- uh, platform, uh, whether it be uh, government or politicians, uh, your, your finances, your 401K, or whatever you want to put your trust in, if it's there, it's really upon the sand, which is shifting. Uh, raise your hand if you've ever been to the Outer Banks. And I love the Outer Banks. My family and I enjoy going there on vacation uh, every once in a while. And uh, the wind, you know, Jockey's Ridge, the big old sand dunes through there, the wind blows that stuff around. And it seems like it may not be, but it seems like I do know the, wind, the sh- sand shifts. And it seems like there's different, the Jockey's Ridge over there, this big, all these hills of sand are different every time we go by. And uh, sand is, is not a stable foundation. And that's why God says don't build your life upon the sand, upon things that are not stable but build your life upon God and his word, who will never lie, who will always be true, and uh, and you'll have a firm foundation for your family and your individual life and uh, in every aspect of life, and I'm thankful for that. The song this morning, Matthew chapter number 7, we'll look there in just a moment. The song this morning will be a blessing, I know, to you. You give a listen as they sing this morning. Me 
much like it. You know, if God's been too good to you, would you say amen to this amen. morning? Amen. God is so good, isn't he? Could y'all sing maybe one more verse of that? That was really good. Could you do one more? You, you're going to try it? And uh, I want you to think about God and his blessings. They, they're going to sing this last verse one more time. I want you to think about how good God has been to you. Has he? Sometimes we have to think a little bit before we become thankful, truly. I want you to think about how good God has been to you as they sing that next verse. God is so good to us. The world that has no peace, and when things go wrong, they go crazy because they don't know what to do. They don't know where to turn. But I'm thankful we have so we have a God we can turn to during this time. We have so many things that we can be grateful for and thankful for in our lives. You listen to this next verse. They did such a good job singing that. You sing it, ladies, one more time. thank him for so much to praise him for well you see you see he's been so good to me when i think i think of what he's done and where he has brought me from i've got so so much to Thank you so much, ladies. And God is so good, isn't He? And uh, I thank the Lord for Him and all that He's done for me personally. And I know that you can testify to that as well. Matthew chapter number 7 in your Bibles. Matthew chapter number 7. And look with me, please, in verse number 24. Matthew chapter 7 and verse number 24 this morning. The Bible says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine... And do with them, I will liken unto him a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rains descended, and the floods came, the winds blew, the same scenario that happened to the wise man. And beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. It destroyed the house. And of course, if you have a red letter Bible, a red letter edition Bible with red letters that show the talking and preaching of Jesus in his earthly ministry, you'll know that this is the words of Jesus as he is teaching 
uh, not only those around him that were gathered, the multitudes that gathered around him, but also for you and I today that's been preserved down through the centuries of time. I'm thankful for the Word of God that's been preserved down for the centuries of time for me. Amen? Uh, I'm thankful that it just wasn't for that time alone, but it's also practical and applicable uh, for today and today's world. Let's pray one more time uh, together this morning. Father, we love you and thank you so much for being so good to me personally. Thank you for being so good to our church. And Father, if we just took just a few moments to think about how good you've been to us, it wouldn't take long for us to have a heart of humility, a heart of worship, and a, and a spirit of receptance of what, what, what you can do for us even more so, and what work perhaps we could do for you in return of all the, your blessings upon us. And I pray, Father, that you'd use me for just a few minutes to be a blessing to your people, and most importantly, to bring honor and glory to your name. And we'll thank you for what you do. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to talk to you this morning about the wise man. The wise man. And uh, there's so many. I've preached about this, I know, I'm sure, uh, here already in the last four years, and probably preach it again at uh, some point or the other. And uh, this is such... A great ending, a conclusion to the greatest sermon that has ever been preached in history. The sermon that I'm referring to is that of Jesus, who is the preacher, and it's na named or labeled uh, by on the Sermon on the Mount. And it goes from Matthew chapter 5 through chapter number 7. And really, this is the conclusion of that. And Jesus is saying, all the things that I preached all the things that I've taught for the last two chapters or the last three chapters, all of these things, I want you to take them in consideration. I want you to hear this message that I've preached to you, and I don't want it to stop there. I want it to sink down into your ears all the way down into your heart. And I want these sayings of mine to, uh, to affect you. I want you to apply these. I don't want you to just simply hear them, although I do, but I want you to do them. And Jesus concludes this sermon uh, on the Sermon on the Mount. And he, uh, and he uses this story, this application of these two men. It's a parable, it's a story of who built a home. One man is uh, noted as a wise man who builds his house upon a firm foundation, a rock. The foolish man built his house or found or a house on the foundation of sand. And the same storm came by the wise man's house as it is the foolish man's house. The winds blew, the rain came, and the, fool, the wise man's house stood firm through that storm. But the foolish man's house uh, basically was destroyed completely in its entirety. Because of its foundation and what it was founded on. It didn't matter how, the, what the, how beautiful it was. It didn't matter how large it was or how small. It didn't matter the size. It didn't matter <clears throat> the decorations or anything like that. What mattered was the foundation. And Jesus is saying, I want you to apply my words and, and build your life upon these sayings of mine. And I hope and trust that you and I today will take the word of God that he has given to us today... Uh, and apply that to our lives as a foundation for you and I today. We become wise when we hear God's Word and we allow it to affect our lives. <clears throat> Excuse me, I do not have corona, I have a frog in my throat, all right? And, uh, okay, I hate that. Every time, every time somebody sneezes or coughs or sniffles or rubs their hair the wrong way, everybody thinks they have corona. And I just put the hair because to be a little bit uh, uh, funny because the truth of the matter is every time somebody does anything we think it's corona, it's not. But number one, the schooling of the wise man. The schooling of the wise man. I've got some water here. The schooling of the wise man. Verse number 24. I want you to look, that, look at it again with me in that verse if you have your Bibles. The Bible says, therefore... Excuse me. Therefore, whosoever heareth these say, I promise you, I know what you're going through your mind right now. Oh, my soul, where's the nearest exit of this building? When I do that the 16th time, you can start worrying. All right. Verse number 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them. I want you to notice again the schooling of the wise of the wise men. You know, when in school, uh, not only was there, was there hearing and instruction that was given. But there was also an application uh, to uh, test 
if you will, what we learned. There was an assignment. There was not only a hearing of that, but there was a, 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 a doing of that, if you will. Uh, my daughter right now, my oldest daughter's in third grade right now, and she is learning multiplication tables. And I remember my grandmother, she is uh, in the other building. She's uh, part of the, uh, one of the children's churches, and she is uh, in there this morning. But uh, I remember going over to her house and, and, and her drilling those multiplication tables in my brain. And uh, uh, we were going over them with my daughter the other day, and I was telling Hannah, I said, test me, test me, see if I still got it, you know. And she was telling me, she said, what's four times four? And I said, oh, 73 or something like that. And, uh, and I, st- I still got it. I'm joking, all right? Four times four is not seven three. But uh, we, were, we were going over those multiplication tables. She's having tests. She has tests about every day of these multiplication tables. And, uh, and, and, they're, and they're hard. She's learning them. And she was supposed to learn them last year, and they didn't get to because of COVID, of course. And she's learning these multiplication tables, having tests. Those, so she's hearing them, and she's hearing them presented to her. But then she's having those tests to apply to know what she is learning. Jesus says here, I don't want you to just hear my word, but I want you to do my word as well. Can I say under this schooling of the wise man, we would be faithful to acknowledge God's word. I want you to mark, if you're in the habit of marking your Bible, circling your Bible, I want you to notice in verse number 24, therefore whosoever heareth these things of mine, notice that word heareth, and mark that or circle that word, therefore whosoever heareth these things of mine. In any decision making in your life, whether if that's who to marry, what job to take, what car to purchase, whatever decision that may be, May we always ask ourselves, what does God say about that? What would God have me to do about that? And I found that, you know, it did not say in the Word of God that Josh Bowles is supposed to marry Hannah Harrison. It does not say that. But it does tell me what kind of woman to marry as a child of God. It doesn't tell me, uh, you know, I'm, I, it doesn't tell me a lot of different things. It doesn't tell me what kind of job I should get. But it does tell me principles that I should set forth in my life. And that helps me find the right job, per se, if you will, please. And the truth of the matter is, in our lives, may we always be asking ourselves, what does God's Word say about that? Those of us that are saved this morning should have a desire to acknowledge God's Word. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter number 2, verse number 2, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. You know, the Bible teaches us that if we're saved, we are changed from the inside out. We became a new creature in the Lord Jesus Christ. And one of those changes that happen is we have new desires in our life. Now as a saved person, I have, since I trusted Jesus, now I have a desire to live for Christ instead of myself. I have a desire to be at church on Sunday morning rather than out on the boat or on the golf course. And there's nothing wrong with playing golf. We're getting ready to have a church tournament. We're going to do it on Saturday instead of Sunday, right? And, 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 and we could go on and on and on. But my desire is to hear the Word of God. But not only to hear it, uh, but, but to apply it to our lives. And we'll get to that in just a moment. Those that are saved should desire to acknowledge the Word of God, and those who are not saved should delight to acknowledge God's Word. Can I say this? If you're not saved this morning, maybe you're watching today, and you're not saved, you've never took that step to trust Christ as your personal Savior, then you may not have a desire for the things of God. You may not have a desire to read the Word of God every day. You may not have a desire to go to church. You're just here because uh, somebody asked you to or because, uh, you, because you thought it was the wise thing to do at the moment or whatever it may be. You may not have a desire to tell others about Jesus Christ. And you may not be passionate about the Christian life. And, and there may not be a desire there, but there should be a delight to acknowledge at least what God has to say. We live in a day when it seems like everybody has closed ears to what God has to say. And I think much of that, I was listening to the radio the other day, it made a lot of sense what I heard. He said, if I can can deny that there is a creator, then I can deny his his word and uh, what God has said. You know, if I say I don't believe that there's a God, then I can erase any commandments or any things that he says is right or wrong. So I make myself my God of my life. 
And the truth of the matter is, if I say, well, there's just no God, if I can erase that, I can just kind of do whatever I want because that eliminates the commandments, that eliminates right and wrong and everything else. And the truth of the matter is, we should at least, if we're not saved, at least to delight and hear what God's words has to say, perhaps about heaven and hell, perhaps about eternity and where I'm going to spend eternity when I leave this world. Notice not only that may we be faithful to acknowledge God's word by hearing, but notice the next part of that verse. And I want you to mark that in verse number 24. Mark this one as well. Therefore, whosoever heareth these things of mine, and what? Say it with me. Do with them. Not only hear them, but also doing these things. I looked up the definition on my phone this week. The definition of acknowledge is to accept or to admit the existence or truth of. But the definition of apply is to bring or put into operation or practical use. So God says, I don't want you just to admit these sayings of mine. I just don't want you to acknowledge and to hear what I have to say, but I want you to put them in practical use into your life. The schooling of the wise man. He was to hear the word of God. He was to apply, to do the word of God. Now, number two, quickly, I want you to notice the storm. Not only the schooling of the wise man, but number two, if you're taking notes, the storm of the wise man. Look with me. I'm going somewhere with this. Look with me in verse number 25. Verse number 25, it says, And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house. And we've already made this statement, I believe, but I want to make it again. Uh, understand that the same storm that came to the wise man's house is the same storm that came to the foolish man's house. And just because you're saved doesn't mean everything's perfect. And by the way, you should not look at your neighbor just because they say that they are saved doesn't mean that they're perfect. And sometimes we look at a Christian or a child of God and we criticize them because of a mistake they made when in reality they understand that they're not perfect. They're growing in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ just like we all are. That doesn't mean we should willfully sin. Can I get amen right there? But that means that we will make mistakes. But I'm simply saying that there's a lot of people that point fingers at a child of God who simply makes a mistake when we should try to help them continue in growing in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. But I want you to notice this storm. This storm. And there are all types of storms, right? There's a hurricane. That's the type of storm. There's a tornado. There's the type of storm. There are hell storms. There are snow storms. There are lightning storms. And we could go on and on. There's all kinds of different storms. And there are different types of storms for people. I'm going to give you three this morning. Number one, there is storms of testing. And those storms of testing come from the Lord. The Bible says in James chapter 1, verse number 2, the Bible says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers' temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith, raise your hand if you've ever had your faith tried before, the trying of your faith worketh something God wants you to have, and that's patience. Raise your hand if you succeed in having great patience through the trying of your faith. That's something that we limit our hands with in many cases. But let patience have her perfect work that she may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. Sometimes we have storms that come into our lives and it's from the Lord. It's divinely appointed and it's a testing from the Lord as God tested Abraham and God tested different people uh, in the word of God and God tests you and I. And that testing, that storm, the, you know, nobody likes storms. You know, our kids look out and they, don't see, they see the lightning, they hear the thunder and it, and it bothers them. Nobody likes the storm, nobody likes the flooding and nobody likes those, that, that type of storm. And there's storms in our life, some are, are, are tests in the form of tests from the Lord. And those, te those tests are from the Lord are there for a purpose and that is to try us. Yes, it, it, it tries us. Are we going to uh, put our faith in ourselves with this storm? Are we going to put ourselves, our faith in this situation? Or are we going to put our faith in God through this storm? And by putting my faith in the Lord, I sometimes in many cases have to wait upon him, which builds patience. That is something that we don't talk about a lot, but God puts a lot of emphasis on it. Wait on the Lord. Isaiah 40, 31, wait on the Lord. Amen. Uh, and, and, and so many times in the Bible, we're told to wait on the Lord and be patient for him and to wait for him. And that builds patience. That's an attribute that nobody wants. I get impatient at a stoplight. 
We were at a stoplight the other day. Matt Bennett, are you in here? You're, he's in the crow's nest. All right, security team. And uh, you're, Matt, you're watching me, so I'm talking about you here. You can't do nothing to me, though, here. You're all way over there. And uh, I'm joking. He won't mind me telling this. We were sitting in Louisville at a stoplight not too long ago. It's probably, oh, it's probably, it's before COVID, all that. So it's probably been uh, seven or eight months ago, I guess. But we we're sitting at a stoplight. You ever get behind somebody and you're the second at, in the stoplight and you're the second in line and the light turns green and they just sit there? They're looking on their phone or eating a hamburger or something, looking down. And you're in a mad rush. It always happens when you're in a mad rush. I mean, if you're not in a hurry, it's just like, well, you know, they'll go one day. You know, you go up north and they're like, if you don't go 30 sa- you know, three seconds before that light turns, they're blowing their horn. And uh, here are people a little bit patient. But I was getting a little bit impatient the other day. Matt Bennett was in the, uh, he was uh, beside of me and I was driving my truck. And uh, <clears throat> we were in Louisville in a stoplight, one of the stoplights, one of the two in, in Louisville. Maybe there's one. Uh, but anyway, I don't know how many stoplights in Louisville. Not, maybe one. But anyway, we were sitting at the stoplight. And this guy in front of us, or lady, whoever it was, uh, was sitting at the stoplight. The light turned green. They're just sitting there. All right? And, uh, and I said, Go. And I didn't want to blow my horn because, you know, that's not Southern hospitality, you know. And I, I didn't want to, you know, I got Temple Baptist Church sticker on my truck. And I just, you know, I try to be careful about things. And sometimes I let it slide. I have to really get on to my wife about that because it's all in our van as well. And, and, um, and I'm joking a little bit. But, uh, you know, I, I didn't want to blow the horn, but I was getting ready to. And I had my hand, you know, type, you know, getting ready to push the horn on the zero. one. I, you know, I, I got stuff to do. I'm a pastor. And, I, you know, I got, uh, let's go. And, and Matt could see my leg shaking and my hand getting ready to blow the horn. And Matt says, be patient, be patient, be patient, be patient, be patient. And I thought, well, I should. And I didn't say nothing, but he just said it out loud. Be patient, be patient. I could hear him. I didn't look at him, I could hear him. And, uh, and the fi- car finally, it, light turned red again, and then it finally turned green, so we were able to go now, or whatever. Something happened, and we were able... I said, Matt, I said, man, I'm sorry. I got a little impatient about that light back there. And he said, well, he said, I was talking to myself. And uh, <laughs> Matt was getting impatient at the, in the passenger seat there. And, um, but the truth of the matter is, the reason that God sends those storms of testing in our lives are for, for to build patience, for us to wait upon him and to trust him and to get closer to him through that storm from him. And then the second type of storm, just like there's hurricanes and storms and, and uh, hail storms and snowstorms and so forth, there's a storm of turbulence. That storm of turbulence is a storm from within. Do you remember what Jesus told his disciples? He said in John chapter 14, verse number 1, Let not your heart be troubled. Raise your hand if you've ever had a troubled heart. And that's a heart of turbulence. There's going something going on. And it's not necessarily a test from the Lord. It's not necessarily something that's coming on from the outside. It's something going on within you. You don't have peace. You have unrest. You have nervousness and, and you have anxiousness and, and you have worry and fear in your heart. And you have some turbulence going on there. And those are storms that go through our lives. We also have the storm of tribulation. That storm of tribulation is not referring to the tribulation that is to come, although that is to come. It's prophecy, the great tribulation. But we're talking about tribulation from without. The Bible says in John chapter 16, verse 33, These things have I spoken to you, that ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. We're going to have tribulation from outside. We're going to have storms that come from above. Those storms are testing from the Lord. We're going to have storms from within. Those come from troubled hearts and fear and worry. And we're also going to have storms that come from the outside into our lives. Those are tribulation. Now, number three, quickly, I want you to notice the stability. And we'll close with this. Number three, the stability of the wise men. So we're going to put these together. The schooling of the wise men. Jesus said, I want you to hear... What is being preached and taught from the Word of God? Jesus said, I want you to listen to the sermon. Matthew chapter 5, 6 and 7. I want you to listen to all these sayings. I want you to listen to the Word of God. I want you to hear it. I want you to acknowledge it. But then I want you to apply it. Don't let it go in one ear and out the other. Implement it. Find where it fits in your life and put the puzzle together in your heart and grow as a child of God. Apply those truths. Because the storm's coming. The storm is coming. 
Someone said, I've said this recently here, I can't remember what service, but either you're either in a storm right now, or you just came through a storm, or you're getting ready to go into a storm. The storm is coming. So hear those sayings and do those sayings. Because when the storm comes, when you hear those sayings and do those sayings, you have stability in your life. Look in verse number 25. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house. The walls that the wise men built and it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock. Jesus looked at Peter and Jesus said, uh, Thou art Peter upon this rock. And he pointed to, I, I, I picture him pointing to himself. To help me understand that because he was not saying the church is built upon Peter. Amen. Amen. The, built, the church is built upon Jesus Christ. We just talked about that several Sundays ago. The church is built upon Jesus Christ. He is the founder of the church. And Jesus is saying, upon this rock, upon this rock, I will build my church. Jesus is the rock of our salvation. He is the rock of our Christian, Christianity and everything. And the wise man will rest in stability through the storm because he has built his house upon something stable. Do you ever wonder about people that are going through stuff in their lives? Maybe it's physical. Maybe it's financial. Maybe it's with a marriage. Maybe with it's uh, their job. Maybe it's with their home. Maybe it's with their kids. You ever see somebody and, they're, and, you, and you know the pressure's on. You know they're going through it. You can sense it. You hear about it. But they're still going to church. And they are still got a smile on their face. And for some weird, crazy reason, they still got some joy. And how is that? It's because they have heard Jesus' sayings and they have done them and they're implementing their lives. They have built their life upon Jesus Christ, not upon the circumstances of life. They have built their life not upon politicians and not upon promises of family members and not upon their own family, not even in, 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 in good things. They built their life upon Jesus Christ. And they know, regardless of the storm that may come, whether it's a testing from the Lord, or whether it's tribulation from without, or maybe it's turbulence from within, they realize that no matter what comes, God's got this. God's going to take care of this. I'm a winner either way. No matter what comes in my life, when I'm anchored to the rock of Jesus Christ, everything's going to be fine. I can find stability. I'm thankful in salvation. The Lord Jesus is the rock of our salvation, and we are trusting Him because can I say this really quickly in closing? Come here for just a second. I'm almost done. Can I say this? I know this message is very simple, but it's so needed. If you have your trust in your works to get you to go to heaven, you're not going to have stability there. Because next week you're going to make a boo-boo. You're going to mess up. And then you're going to have this idea, what do I do now? I'm thankful the Bible teaches we cannot lose our salvation because it's anchored in the rock of Jesus Christ. But if you're, if you're looking for stability and you're going to heaven based upon your good works, you may be doing really good today, but watch out for tomorrow. You're going to be in a, a world of mess, a confusion. If, you're, if your stability, if you're trusting in your stability of, of, of religion to go to heaven, well, I've got sprinkled. Well, I read my Bible, I do good things, and I go to church. If you're doing those things, you're building your foundation of eternity on sand. And it's not going to hold up. But friend, when you trust Jesus and you say, Jesus, I realize I'm a sinner and I realize that because of my sin I cannot go to heaven. I realize that hell was not created for me. It was created for the devil and his angels. But I realize because of my choice to sin and my nature that I've been born with, this sin nature, I realize that and I admit it. And I realize that heaven's a perfect place and I cannot go there because of my imperfection and my sin even though I don't want to, I still do, and I'm, I admit that. But I realize what you've done for me nearly 2,000 years ago on the cross. You bled and died for my sins willingly because you love me. And I accept your death for me. And I accept you as my Savior. Come to my heart and save me. You will have a firm 
stability, knowing you can go into heaven. That's why 1 John 5, 13 says, These things that I've written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. We can have stability in the rock of Jesus Christ. Let me ask you a question this morning. What are you trusting for for good of heaven? Are you trusting in your work? Are you trusting in a religion? Are you trusting in what somebody else has done for you, what somebody said you did? Are you trusting in Jesus Christ? When you're trusting in religion or good works or anything else, that's putting a foundation upon sand. When you build your foundation upon Jesus, it's like building upon a rock. And let me ask you this, dear Christian, come here for a minute. If you're saved, what are you trusting in through the storm? Are you going to trust in this situation, your neighbor, a promise, a politician, whatever? Or are you going to put your trust in Jesus and God's Word and build your life upon that? I trust that you've allowed God to speak to your heart today. And I don't know where you're, where you're, where you're going to get your stability, but you will not find true stability until you anchor your life in Jesus Christ through salvation and through Christianity. Anchor it in the Word of God, the rock, Jesus Christ. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I know that this is something that kids sing, but I also know that Jesus Christ, who's God manifest in the flesh, taught this to adults and made it so simple that anybody could understand. And I want us to make sure that we are hearing the Word of God, we're receiving it, but we're applying it. We're implementing it. We're living by it. Because the storm will come. And when it comes, make sure you're anchored in the rock. Let's stand together. Musicians are playing. If God has spoke to your heart, I want you to find your place right now around this altar. Would you come? Would you meet me up here? Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. Would you come? If you're not saved this morning, I didn't ask you whether you're saved or not to raise your hand. But if you're here tonight or this morning and you say, Pastor, I've never trusted Jesus as my personal Savior. Well, if you'll come this morning, we'll help you with that. We'll talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. This mic will come off. I'll be happy to talk to you. If you're a dear lady, we'll have a lady talk to you. Brother Moore can talk to you. We'll help you in any way we can. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. We're getting ready to sing. And as Brother Holly leads us in this first verse, I want you to put that step forward and make your way up here. Meet me at this platform. If you'll look at me, we'll help you. One-on-one well, -on -one about getting saved, whatever that need may be in your life. Brother Holly's singing. You come right now. If God spoke to your heart, how about it? Think about it. Without Him I could do nothing Without Him, I'd surely fail. Without Him, I would be drifting. Think about it. Like a ship without a sail. Sing it together if you know it on the course. Jesus, oh Jesus. Us. Do you know him today? Please don't turn him away. Oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, without him, how lost I would be. Amen. Father, we love you this morning. We thank you for your word. Help us to implement it into our lives. Not just hear it, but do it. Father, I pray that if there's someone not saved today, they're building their eternal hope upon their works or something that they've done. Father, help them to realize that that's not going to get them to heaven. Only Jesus, only you can get them by forgiving their sins. Help them to seek someone after service today before they leave the property about getting that settled. Father, work and move and help them there. Help us as Christians to implement these truths into our lives. Help us to build our lives upon the rock of Jesus Christ. The rock of your word. Something that's sure. Something that's stable through the storm. We love you. In Jesus' name.
Amen. You can look this way. You can be seated for just a moment. We're going to get our announcements today. And I mean that. If you have a need today, I'm usually the last person to leave the property. And if you'll wait just a minute, I'll be happy to talk to you. My wife will be happy to talk to you after the service as well. All right? We'll do these announcements this morning, and then we'll be dismissed. Thank you for joining us here today. I would like to remind you of a couple upcoming events. We are thankful for another wonderful Super September service this past Tuesday with Pastor Ronnie Harrison and the special music from the Chad Harrison family. This Tuesday will conclude our series of these special services with Pastor Chris Hazlett from the Calvary Baptist Church in Statesville, as well as special singing from the Daughters of Calvary from Mount Airy. Begin praying today and join us this Tuesday at 7 p.m. for this last service of our Super September. Our fall golf tournament this year will be on Saturday, October 3rd. This will be a men and women's tournament, and we are looking forward to a great time of fellowship with our church family. If you plan to attend, please see the sign-up sheet today, located in the entrance of the fellowship building. On Sunday, September 27th, there will be a to-go lunch after the morning service provided by our Ladies Missionary Prayer Fellowship Ministry. Please check your bulletin for the menu as well as pricing and make plans now to support this event that will go towards helping families during the upcoming Christmas season. Once again, we have t-shirts as well as hats with our church logo available for those interested. This is a great way to spread the word in our communities about what God is doing at our church. T-shirts are $8 each and our hats are $11. If you're interested, please see the sign-up sheet today located in the front entrance. There will be a baby shower for Ashley Yelton on Saturday, October 10th from 2 to 4 p.m. in the Genesis building. Make plans now to come and support Travis and Ashley with their new member of the family. As we take precautionary measures during this pandemic, please remember that our offering plates are not being passed. If you would like to give today, offerings will be received as you exit the building, or you may give online through our website at templebaptistchurch.info. We would like to welcome each family back today at 6.30 p.m. for our evening service. Pastor Bowles will be continuing our series on the life of Moses. We are looking forward to a great meeting with special singing and a helpful message from God's Word. Good crowd, and uh, I don't know if you noticed, we have put in a extra back row all the way across through there, and we did have four rows deep, now we're going five rows deep, and so that's a good problem to have, amen? And narrows our aisle down back there a little bit, but I'm thankful for God growing His church, amen, spiritually, uh, financially, and numerically, we rejoice in that. All right, turn around, greet one another, uh, don't forget about service tonight. God bless you, you are dismissed this morning.